Brother Jackson said, the fact that they've been trained to be uh, a military force right. instead of being trained to protect and serve. Protect and serve has completely been eliminated right. from their form of training. So they're, I mean, I've never seen growing up any officer empty their gun Come on now. To an individual. Right. The military, you don't do that. Come on. You don't exhaust your ammunition on one person. That's right. But we are, but in America, we have grown up in like, what, what, what are they training them to do? I mean. To, to, to destroy. And, and, and the other thing is, when you look at the discipline they have, when you're looking at people of color or people who are not. Come on, then. When people of color, it's all out military force. Come on. There's no restraint. There, it doesn't matter the situation or circumstance in most of the incidents. But when you have a person who is white. Come on now. The protect and serve is is foremost. Come out. They they come in. They try and to they try to uh, de-escalate. Come out. Even when they're being cussed out, spit on, and everything else, they they are police officers. Then. Yeah. Yeah. But I uh, I was just watching a movie on uh, Matibo. Uh, apartheid yeah okay. you know, and how the young kids they're like we're not taking this anymore and they took to the streets and the youth began to revolt and uh when the youth get tired and they get a mindset of of making change right these, these, these cops don't have a chance. Yeah. I mean, they these, these kids are so advanced now, they can come at these police officers in so many ways that they haven't even thought of. That's what I was saying earlier. We don't want that. You, they don't no. even they and that's, have no that's idea. what they don't want. They don't they have no idea. They don't want that, that, but it's like they're trying to get the the the, the people of color to 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 get past that mark of restraint. They, they, they yeah. Yeah. Go out and but who's who doing it? That, and that has been the question because we've been militarizing the police for the last few decades. Yeah. And um, we know, we see that they are more positioned not for riot control than they are for protecting and serving. So these guys are ready to throw down and they've been trained to throw down, but who's doing it and to whose benefit is going to be when we get rid of the police departments in the country and our anarchy ensues in the United States of America, somebody is literally and purposefully trying to destroy this country. Well, somebody's trying to, to me, it's like the uh, that young kid that shot at the church, that Christian church, doing a Bible study. He was saying he's trying to initiate a race war. Yeah. Uh, the training, like you said, I'm glad you, you, you broke it down. They, they're trained to react to respond to a certain group of people or category of people that way. But when it comes to their own people, they they do the de escalation, the benefit of the doubt. And and it has been done throughout history. You know what I mean? The laws and stuff when they free slaves, remember the vagrancy law. Uh if you if you walk around free black man, you don't have a job, you'd be arrested because you don't have a job at the time you would stop. And you may even have a job. Especially you talking about agriculture, right? If you're working on a farm, or 
or your family has a farm, you do have a job. Mm -hmm. But you may be walking down the street to visit somebody else. That don't mean you don't have a job. You see what I'm saying? But that's what they were using. They, they've been using the law to go after a certain category of people. And also that book I was talking about, they're trying to say you have valid tendency, uh, but Addison, you, 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 I have to approach you because you, 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 the description that they have given me about you tells me that I got to approach you with full dominant force because you're subject to do anything to me. Yeah, but you look at history. I know. And there is proof. Yeah. That it is completely the opposite. Exactly. That I think people that are not of color are violent. They are are dictative. They are combative. They are They're very much so prejudiced. Lack uh, empathy and are quick to judge based on on false evidence. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, it's a sad thing because people of color tend to forgive and love more than any other race that there is. I mean, you just look at the history. Well, you know what that book says that they, they identified us as, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but it says docile, uh, not dominant but docile in nature. Yeah. That, that's, but, not, that's not always a true statement, I don't agree with, but well, it's like docile. We, which one lines up though? I mean, to say docile is to say meek maybe, uh, but what would Christ, yeah. what would Christ, you know, what does Christ condone? What does he preach? What did he do? And what's gonna last? What we see here is the demise of a nation because as the brother was saying earlier, if they continue to employ the tactics that they're doing, a flash mob is quick and these guys got so much technology that they can have a whole group of people in a spot in a second. Only thing they gotta do is get on the, on the phone and say, okay, we got a problem over here on the corner of Maine in a second. We need everybody to come over with your guns because these cops losing it over here and snipe the heck out of them. So it's not like it's not like the cops can't be controlled. The cops can't be policed. But when that happens, then it's going to create a state of anarchy in that in that community. What's eventually going to happen is who has the greatest amount of power is going to overthrow who has the weak amount of power and rise to the top and dominate. Here we go with that domination thing again, and here we go with another cycle of. of, of rise and fall of a nation. And that has been going on ever since mankind has left the garden. Right. One nation rises, a stronger nation comes and overthrows it. Another nation comes and overthrows it. The only community, the only country that has lasted has been the kingdom of God. And the, and the, and the dispersion and application of power has always been from bottom up. It's the yeah. only government that's gonna last because that's the way it's formed. Right. The, the world system ain't gonna, it doesn't work. Not over an extended period of time, just power as long as you got the power, but somebody's gonna rise up and take over. That doesn't work. And so what God is in compelling us to do is to come out of the world system, come into the kingdom, and begin to live that out in front of those who are in the world system, who hopefully will embrace it and become a part of that system, which is the only one that's gonna be left standing anyway. These systems, all of them are already predestined for destruction. Yeah. I, 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 the unrighteous, it says the seed of the unrighteous shall not inherit. Yeah, well, yeah. The, 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 these guys that are doing all this stuff ahead, for whatever reason is that they're doing it, have already set them, their children up for failure. That stuff doesn't work. Well, yeah, but that book, like I said, that book I keep talking, referring to, Stamp from the beginning, it, it's what they've been passed on to them from generation to generation. Yeah. That That's what's in their mind. That's in their psyche. When somebody say I want to make it home at night, or I, I feel for my life, somewhere in the church told them that it was okay to do that. Yeah, but the problem is, is, if that's your fear, then get another profession. Come on, brother. Because that, that, that's not what it's called for. Right. It, it, and, it, and it blows my mind that we've gone from them protecting us to them expecting us to protect them. Uh -huh. So 
I'm, I'm like, when did this flip flop? Yeah. You know, when when did the narrative change to where they their their willingness to get into this particular profession has you know the 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 job description has changed to where <laughs> your authority supersedes the benefit of society. Wow. So, you know, and then you look at when you change the narrative uh, and when you can control the communication, that's that's the first part of war. Mm. You you knock down communication in any war, any warfare. What is the first thing our military does is they attack the ability to be able to communicate. Right. When you when you you take that, then there is no no one in authority can give out any orders and it's so prevalent that they're starting to get social media yeah they're already attacking TikTok, facebook everything yeah and that's the new form of communication to the youth yeah. and they're trying to control it so anytime you see them attacking the forms of communication you know that they're trying to take authority over society because they're doing wrong and they expect society to fight back. Yeah. They there, there expect is a, a revolt. As a body of Christ, I think there's an agenda that we have to kind of keep, maybe stay focused on in the sense that it's the warfare was set by God and it was between the sons of God and the sons of darkness, the sons of light and the sons of darkness. All the other stuff, to an extent, kind of confuses the issue, or maybe just a camouflage. But at the end of the day, it's going to be coming against Christianity, and so Christianity has to. We have to unite. The house of God has to unite. It's the house divided against itself will not stand. The principles and concepts of this world system are thrown at us a lot of times, but just confusing the issue. Uh, Mr. Trump, regardless of his political position, of uh, it still needs salvation. And the church addresses it from that perspective. The country as a whole would benefit from unity. To be united in Christ is going to be the greatest. This is the greatest thing that has happened in the United States of America anyway. It actually has been the reason it has been so successful as it has, because it was united in Christ to a certain extent. So the house needs to come back together to pull this country, pull the focus on our Lord again. We are literally trying to, we are combating these world systems. We really are. And whether we, Acknowledge it or not, we are Satan's greatest enemy. Well, see, and the thing else I'm saying is that, and, and I said, I hope y'all get that book, but I definitely want to use the uh, the statement that the church, you know, I put it close in there. The church has endorsed that junk from from a long, long time ago. The church is the one that that tried to demonize people so that these the actions by the legal system is susceptible because these people are evil doers. You remember that script I was talking about before I was saying is that don't be don't let someone call you, don't be calling a murderer or, or, or an evildoer. But that's exactly what the church played a role in through history concerning a group of people. It, it talked about the black slave. It talked about Africa. It talked about China. I mean, in any ethnic group that did not line up or did not meet the European or Aryan philosophy were demonized as well as as what you call it what they call it that social structure where we try to put people by category and, and, and say well you know the caste system this is where well, the caste system or even you're talking about superiority where it's saying is that i'm gonna rank you i'm gonna create a social structure where i'm gonna say this group of people are higher than the, this other group of people mm -hmm. you know what i mean if, 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 if you if you have this particular color, we're going to say you are the superior 
And then it starts racking and stacking people based on their ethnic roots. And, and, and you know, the beauty of it is that we've come to knowledge of the scripture. And I think that's what Satan was most of, uh, afraid of, was not so much learn to read secular stuff as it was to learn to read the universal truth of God. Right. And the universal truth of God still stands. And, and it's not, the fight literally is not between the races or the ethnic groups, it's between the sons of God and the sons of, of, the, of darkness. Right. We the sons.